Well, everybody, we left off in part one of this curves tutorial. We left off where uh, we looked at how to change the tonal values inside our photos, the lights and the darks and the, the mid areas inside the photo. Now let's take a look at how to work on specific colors. And that's right up here in the channels palette. Or not the channels palette, but under the channel menu. All right, so let's go ahead and cancel out of here. And let's open up another photo to work with here. And I'm going to take one more quick, remember our gradient image from the first two part of this tutorial? Let's take a quick look at it. Let's go add another curves adjustment down here. And this time I'm going to go under the channel menu, I'm going to choose red. So if you recall, when I moved this part of the photo, this part of the curve, everything, when I moved it upward, everything became lighter. And when I moved this part downward, everything became darker. Well, the way the channel area works with the different colors is now, instead of making it darker, when I move this upward, remember we're working on our shadows here, so keep an eye on the black colors. See how they're becoming red. So as I move this curve upward, they're becoming red. Now, if you were to look at a color wheel, what's the opposite color of red? And you probably don't have a color wheel in front of you, but if you can't guess it, it's cyan. It's a greenish color. So now, if I move this color down, and so what we're saying here is everything from this part of the curve, this whole piece of the triangle, anything inside here will make the photo more red. Everything in this part will make it cyan. So when I drop this down, take a look at the highlight areas. See how they become greener and greener, almost to that cyan color. Okay, so now what I'm saying here is everything up here is red, Everything down here is the opposite of red, which is cyan. So take a look over to our uh, info palette here. And as I move this up, take a look at the red value. See the red value where our number two point was? It's starting to increase. Now what's the opposite of red? Cyan. So as I move this downward, red's decreasing. So in order to get rid of red, I have to add green, okay, or cyan. So that's how this works. And now if I go down to green, same thing. If I move this upward, the shadows, the dark areas become green. If I move this downward, they become magenta. Magenta is the opposite color of green. So this part's green. But think of it this way. The top area is always going to be the channel color you have selected. Same thing with blue. Up, blue, down, yellow. All right, yellow is the opposite of blue. So now let's use that same philosophy here on to a photograph. And here's a photo that has a, a good degree of highlights right here on the skin tone, but we also have lots of shadows. So let's open up curves. And as I change my channel to red, what's in the shadows? Well, the background and lots of parts in her hair. So as I move this upward, we're going to start to see all that area turn red. And as I move the highlights area downward, you're going to see for the most part the shadows will stay the same. But you're going to see her face start to turn cyan. Okay, see what's happening there? Although the shadows inside the hair in the background pretty much look the same. Same thing goes with green. Move it up. We add more green. We move this down. Magenta. So her face will become red or magenta. And then blue is the same thing. So blue and yellow if I were to move that. But we've also got another thing here. Remember, we talked about the shadows and we talked about the highlights, but we also talked about this whole mid area right in the center. So now as I move this upward, now what I'm doing, because keep in mind, most of this photo, all the area in here is going to be the midtones. These aren't extreme highlights. So as I move this upward, I'm introducing a red tint to the entire photo. Okay? And as I move it downward, I'm introducing a cyan tint to that photo. So we're just talking about opposite colors here. Incidentally, let me cancel out of here and go under Image, Adjustments, and go over to Color Balance. And if you're ever wondering, uh, if you forget what those opposite colors are, take a look at Color Balance, and you can see the opposites right here. You have red over here, the opposite is cyan. Green over here, the opposite is magenta, blue, yellow. So if I ever want to remove red from the photo, I have to add cyan. It's an opposite color, and adding cyan takes away red, and the same thing for the other three colors here. 
Okay, so now let's go look at another photo and see how we can use the same thing that we've learned here. We'll add curves and take a look at the red channel here. <coughs> By moving this upward, I will add a red tint to the entire photo. By moving it down, I'll be adding green. So I don't like the green, I kind of like the red. And we're, we're essentially, we're pumping up the reds here. Let's go to green. Remember, I didn't like cyan, so chances are, as I drag this upward, I'm not going to like green either. But as I drag it downward, magenta. So I'm kind of getting more of that red, just a different color, almost adding a bit of a purple color to it. And then as I change this to blue, blue I can go either way. I kind of like the cool effect, and I kind of like the warming effect as well. So uh, blue up here, yellow down here. And remember, most of the photo is going to be inside of these mid-tone areas. So I'm not really working on the shadows or the highlights, but the mid areas. And I, kinda, I think we're going to go with a warming kind of a yellow tint for this one. So now I've added some nice color. That was before, and that was after. And then the last thing that I would do here is add that classic S-curve. Let's bring the shadows down, and let's bring those highlights up a little bit. I don't want to restart my computer. Don't you love that? I love how it works like that. OK, so preview on, preview off, and preview back on. So you can see by using curves, we do get a good degree of versatility. It's not just working on shadows. It's not just working on highlights. It's not just working on midtones. I can work on all three of them all in the same place. Not only that, but now I have access to work on the colors inside of my photos individually inside of here too by going to this channel picker because now I'm not just working on the lights and the darks of the photos but I'm also working on what color and how I want to tint those colors inside my photograph. So you really do get a great deal of versatility from curves. I definitely get in there, give it a try, work on your photos and just like anything if you're not sure what it does, open up a, a blank image, create a little gradient like that, and start playing around with it. And start trying to think about how that works with your photos. How what's happening in this gradient can be translated over to the shadows and the highlights and the mid-tone areas inside of your photograph. So, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again next time.